This right here is another viewer's broken gaming PC. It turns on but does not post, which means it doesn't send a picture out to a monitor. There's a really nice Intel rig in here, and I can tell that it is owned by a smoker because it has a pretty rank, tarish kind of smell. So hopefully we don't have to dive too deep into it, but uh, I've jinxed myself more than once in this playlist. So let's jump right into it. Are you ready? Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying Windows activation watermark, head on over to VIP SCD key. Purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window, and say bye bye to the watermark. And be sure to use our offer code SKGS for a so sweet discount. The very first thing we need to do is attempt to power the system on and replicate the issue described by the owner. Again, no post, so it should turn on we just won't get a signal here. By the way, for those who are new, Fix or Flop is a pretty simple playlist. All we do is reach out to folks in and around Orlando, Florida, and offer to fix their systems, or at least attempt to, for free. That's why we call it Fix or Flop. We have had a few of those, unfortunately, but uh, most of the time, we can get these systems back up and running again, free of charge to the owners in question, which is great. We have uh, relationships with vendors, uh, manufacturers of components and, and the like, so um, there's really no need for me to charge anybody anything, and I get to make videos out of it, which is uh, a win-win, I think, for everybody. So let's try to power this on. Power at the rear is good. Okay, took a minute, and there we go. Holy cow, oh, the smell, the tarry smell coming from this rig is pretty, pretty rough. <laughs> I'm gonna have to definitely deep clean the rig, or the, uh, the, the whole office after this. Oh gosh, standing right behind that fan. Whew. Uh, doesn't look like we're gonna get a post though, which is consistent with what we are expecting. Also interesting, we have a Dr. Debug LED up top and it's just showing us dashes which is not something I've seen before. This can often mean that there is some sort of catastrophic failure in the rig. Uh, could be something very simple though. Uh, maybe something is not wired correctly. Uh, maybe your RAM isn't seated properly or the CP for that matter. We have another set of LEDs further down and the one illuminated currently is for the CPU. Now the CPU is just one of the first things that's checked in the post process. So it's possible that this isn't actually a CPU issue. It just couldn't get further in the check because well, something very, very pertinent is, is, is wrong, um, but it very well could be a CPU problem. So this does help us narrow down the steps that I wanna take right out of the gate. And one final context clue, these memory modules. Now everything you'll notice in the rig is illuminated, including the AIO block for the CPU, but the DRAM lights in these modules are not lighting up. And so this, this is probably CPU or motherboard related. Uh, I, would, I would wager it's one of those two, uh, maybe a BIOS issue or a very obvious wiring issue. I'm gonna check wiring first. We're also gonna check uh, the CMOS. We're gonna clear the CMOS and we will reseat memory. Those things are very easy and fast to do. Clearing the CMOS is very simple. We've got these two pins here around JBAT1 that we want to jump. So we're gonna take our magnetic screwdriver, hold them over these pins for about uh, 10 to 20 seconds with the system fully powered off. His RAM felt fine. I am going to remove both DIMMs, however, and insert one DIMM of my own into slot A2 just to rule it out. And we're still not getting any DRAM lights. So yeah, something is, uh, something's very wrong here. And behind the motherboard tray, while it is a bit messy back here, I don't see any obvious connection issues. Everything is connected properly, including on the power supply side. The next thing I'm gonna do is strip everything down. Uh, we're gonna remove all of the non-pertinent peripherals, things like hard disk drives, NVMEs, etc. We don't need any of that stuff for the system to post. So we're gonna disconnect all of that, try to keep it to just the motherboard, CPU, and well, that's really it actually. We'll just connect the 24 pin and the A pin EPS and that's it. Everything else can be detached, including the graphics card, which will rule out another variable. This graphics card, by the way, is an RTX 3070, and it'd be a heck of a shame if this was to blame for the reason why the system wouldn't post. So now the only things connected to this platform are, of course, the CPU. The block is still here, uh, but the pump, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect. The system's not gonna be on long enough for that to matter anyway. Uh, and the 24 pin, 8 pin EPS, that's it. I've also got the power switch still wired up, but that works just fine. Um, Everything else is, is off. So if this still persists, then I will start focusing on either the motherboard or the CPU. Probably the CPU first, it's the easier of the two to swap out. So let's go ahead and give it another shot. We're just gonna be looking for uh, Dr. Debug 
codes, and we still got the double dash. At this point, I'd be willing to wager it's a CPU problem. It just, it, it really does smell like one. Um, let's go ahead and power this back down and see what we have to work with. Let's see, this CPU is, get the thermal paste out of the way. It's a Core i9-11900K, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, so a couple generations old. I think I have a replacement for this. Now the socket, I was looking at this, uh, it looks fine actually, no bent pins, no missing pins. So it doesn't look like a physical problem, at least with this part of the motherboard. And the underside of his CPU also checks out. So what I'm gonna do, because I don't actually have, I thought I did, I don't have an 11900K on hand to swap with his. I do have a 10900K. And to the best of my knowledge, it's been a little while since I've dealt with Z590. Uh, you can support both 10th and 11th gen on the same Z590 motherboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap in my 10th gen chip and see if we can get this thing up and running, or at the very least try to upgrade the BIOS if it is a BIOS issue to get this 11900K working because there might not be anything wrong with it. Now with my chip in here, what I wanna do very quickly before we go about reassembling the cooler and just making a headache of things if this doesn't end up working, I wanna try to power the system on straight up as is. And we're only gonna do it for a few seconds so no, it won't harm the CPU and I'll be making sure that it's not overheating. And actually we can take this opportunity to see if the chip is even getting power because if it's not, then that would tell me that it's a power delivery issue more than likely, which means it's probably the motherboard and we're looking in the wrong place. So we're gonna flip the switch there and I'm gonna go ahead and attempt to power on. And we still, still have the double dash, the Dr. Debug, and we still have the CPU light illuminated further down. Also, this chip is not getting hot. So I think we have a dead motherboard on our hands. Yeah, this thing is, is literally room temperature still. And it should not be. At this point, the CPU should be getting pretty hot, or the IHS above the, the die. But uh, it is, I can still touch it. it. It feels the same as when I had the system off. So let's go ahead and swap the board then. I need to check to see if I have a Z590 motherboard laying around. Oh my gosh. It doesn't look like Z590 motherboards are like crazy expensive or anything, which is nice. I can get one overnighted for, what was it, 150 bucks? It's a gigabyte Z590. So I think that's one I'm gonna go with just to get them up quickly. And I think, let's see, how much time do I have? I have two hours and 28 minutes before I can't get it sent tomorrow. So the perks of living near uh, an Amazon warehouse. What we're gonna do just to, just to be safe, again, I don't wanna buy a Z590 motherboard and not actually need it. I have a Z590 board, but it's an ITX board. So we're going to literally swap in my ITX board, which will look really silly in his larger Corsair case. Uh, and we're gonna see if we can get the system to work. If we can, that obviously, rules out everything except for the motherboard at that point. So uh, that will be the icing on the cake and the surefire guarantee that uh, this will fix the problem. So before we click buy now, let's test that with an ITX board. I'm also gonna go ahead and put his CPU in this new motherboard just to rule out another variable that both his chip and his motherboard are dead. I know, I know, it looks super silly with an ITX board in this large case. Like I said, just for testing purposes, we've got all of his primary components reconnected, including his original DDR4 kit, his graphics card, his AIO has been fastened so this chip doesn't overheat, because again, I'd wager this is gonna work this time. We've got the portable monitor hooked up. Ooh, we actually get LEDs now. I think if we didn't have the cooler on, I was feeling the chip, it would get hot. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. That's a signal, give me a post. Come on, give me, yes, there it is. Okay, so his CPU's fine, his graphics card's fine, everything's good. It's just this motherboard. Sorry, give me a second, I gotta remove my CPU. There we go. Yeah, it's just this board. There's something wrong with this, I don't know what, but uh, it's definitely keeping the system from posting. The double dash on the debug LED is not a good sign. I've never seen that before. I think that just means the board's totally bricked. Uh, it's not a BIOS issue either because a lot of the BIOSes that rolled out with these boards supported 11th gen and 10th gen simultaneously, uh, and we couldn't even get my 10th gen chip to work in here. So if it was a BIOS problem, 10th gen at the very least would have worked with this because natively this chipset supported that. Um, so I'm not sure what to think at this point. We'll check for physical damage, 
but uh, we need to go ahead and order that replacement motherboard. That's for sure. And of course, Amazon lied to us. We had like a two and a half hour window for overnight delivery. It's only been 30 minutes and it says it can only get here in two days. So every other listing here will get here in two days. So we might as well get them something a bit cheaper since I'm dipping into my own pocket. We'll do Gigabyte Z590 UDAC. This has uh, integrated Wi-Fi, still a Z series chipset, so we can still overclock. So now we wait. I'll see you in two days. A few inches later. Hey, that wasn't so bad. Here it is, a brand new Z590 motherboard. Yes, they still have these brand new on Amazon, and this is already a few generations old. Now, they're not manufacturing these anymore, as far as I'm aware, uh, but they just have surplus inventory. That usually means you can get these for decent prices, and what, the 110, 120 bucks I paid for this is pretty good for a Z590 chipset. And of course, these already natively support 11th gen Intel processors, so his chip should work right out of the box. Easy does it. Just like that, and lower the retention arm. Nice. We'll also get his RAM and storage back in here since we've confirmed that none of these are the issue. One and two. Nice. This M.2 has a massive copper slab atop it, and it's uh, pretty beefy, pretty heavy. So we're just gonna use this instead of the stock motherboard one. Gonna get everything we can wired up here. This is basically gonna be the same build with a different motherboard. That's my goal. That way uh, we'll know that we're finished with this rig. We've actually fixed it. The last thing is the graphics card. And I gotta, gotta remove these two screws. I forgot I put everything back in here so I didn't lose anything. And uh, wowie, this still really smells like tar. I'm looking forward to getting this one back out of the office because it's making everything smell pretty rough. Get this card in there. Get our two independent PCIe cables connected. One and two. Almost a little, a little cramped over here. All right, and here we go. This is the moment of truth. Power on at the rear, power button up front. Yeah, I don't wanna leave this on too long because it's just blowing nastiness everywhere. Just wanna make sure that we get a post. And uh, technically, I think Windows was already on the storage drive. So we should get to Windows. And we're off to a great start. Just um, shut off on us. Just gonna be patient. <laughs> Let this play out. I forgot I need to reconnect the uh, SATA cables for his other drives down here, but that shouldn't affect this. Come on now. Oh boy. There we go. Okay. Looks like it's loading into Windows. That's a good sign. Come on now. Getting devices ready. That's normal. We swapped motherboards. Of course, it's going to be trying to figure things out, although it should mostly be the same. Come on. Resetting itself again. Come on. Get into Windows already. Let's go. This is a super fast drive here. There it is. There it is. We knew with, with near certainty that that part would fix the issue. And it in fact did. Looks like we're in Windows. No problems with posting anymore. By the way, I did take a few minutes off camera to look at the old motherboard, the one that wasn't allowing the system to post uh, with all of the heat shields and things off. So. This is what that old MSI board looked like, uh, just bare, bare board. And I don't see any physical issues. Again, the chipset looks fine. The socket itself looks fine. I don't see any uh, burn marks anywhere. Sure, we could start probing around and we might find something, but uh, I think for the sake of time, replacing the motherboard, it was only about a hundred bucks, was the uh, just a quicker, surefire fix for this viewer. So that's a wrap. Thanks so much for watching this far into this one. I'm really glad we could get the system back up and running again. It came down to the motherboard. Apparently this had been uh, part swapped a few different times in the past because he had run into infrequent issues. And uh, this motherboard wasn't but two or three months old. So it's just, um, just really bad luck that it decided to kick the can as quick as it did. Um, it's, it's possible that 
there's an easy fix on the horizon for that board. I'm gonna keep it and run some more tests with it. But again, the fact that we couldn't even get our 10th gen chip to work in it, that we know works in other boards, uh, tells me that it's it's probably not BIOS related. And even if it was, uh, the, the fact that we're getting double dashes and, and we're not getting any sort of response from the rig, apart from, I mean, we're not even getting the DRAM to light up. Um, that tells me that it's probably something a bit more uh, a bit more problematic than just the BIOS. Uh, so it is what it is. Again, I'll let you know if I find anything else about that board. But for now, I'm happy that the rig is up and running. We can get this back to him this weekend and he can start gaming on it once again. With that, consider leaving a like or commenting or even just subscribing. If you have not already, be sure to uh, join our public Discord server. That's totally free. You can support us on Patreon if you'd like. And stay tuned for the next video here on the channel. My name is Greg. Thanks so much for learning with me.